Alright, first of all, I don't care too much about He-Man. Uh, why would I? It's, uh, you, I don't see any way to make a cartoon for an adult. Uh, not like this, because this is way too much of a childhood cartoon. It's like, eh, you got the memories. It was fun while it lasted. It's just, it's just a little soy, toy selling show. That's just the whole point of the show is to sell toys. Um, what I'm more interested in is Kevin Smith, who I still have hope for, because he has done so many great things. Um, and Holly Weed is on, still on YouTube, which, you know, with a little bit of polishing could have been funny, but, uh, anyway. Okay, so, I think Hollywood storytelling in general is over, which I know sounds a little bit hyperbolic, but try to think about what the Hollywood is going to be like after the 2020 issues. Every classic structure has been labeled wrong think by the Ministry of Truth. What classic story can be told where every year is year zero? the start of the glorious revolution where you have the first amendment but the new town square is digital so censorship is okay as long as the boot is zuckerberg so so no upon further reflection the first amendment has been rendered moot as long as it's not the government infringing on our rights <sighs> why would you why would you suck anyone's boot so kevin smith has a project called he-man that nobody is going to watch because it's called He-Man. And He-Man is a bitch now. Who is the show for? The 40-plus-year-old or for kids? Apparently, the reviewers are saying it's, it's for adults. It doesn't quite click with adults. And it doesn't matter because nobody wants to see ugly women and soy boys. You can't stop saying that you're owning... Uh, you can stop saying you're owning the chads. They seem to, like, put out crap and say, Ah, at least we're going to make those Nazis mad. Why, why would they be mad? They're not going to watch the show. Why would they watch the show? There's very little interest in a cartoon like this that really is going to have a hard time uh, coming up to the modern age where something like G.I. Joe is easily can easily be done. And, you know, maybe if a live action, like something campy like the, the Dolph Lundgren film, was that 1987? God, that was freaking hysterical. Like, imagine doing that if you had a, a budget of a few, few tens of millions of dollars. So no, the 40-year-old chads aren't watching a bunch of breastless lesbians. Very few adults are going to watch our cartoon, and kids have no idea who He-Man is. Kevin Smith is going to Space Jam He-Man. Both creations are 40 years old, and they're 40 years too late. So kids don't know them. Then you add in that you took away the likable parts, and you have a bomb. People hate LeBron, and they remove the funny bits of the um, the show because it's not politically correct anymore. So you're left with a two-hour self-affirming circle jerk about how his kid's a computer genius, and LeBron's only fault is he loves his son too much. Uh, nobody has time for that. I will say the backgrounds look really cool, but again, this is this was r very much a little kid's cartoon. It was silly even for kids, and like we knew it was silly when it was on. So they want to sell you something, but it's bait and switch. They use a name, Star Wars, He-Man, Space Jam, Ghostbusters, uh, Men in Black, uh, Charlie's Angels. God, they've done it quite a bit. They've done like a dozen of these things over the past 15 years. So those, those names refer to concepts, to memories that people have of these shows. So they get an audience who show up and discover that they've been tricked. It's He-Man, but not really. Then why not call it something else? Because they want your money, and they're shifty, tricksy little worms. Now here's the thing with Kevin Smith. It's not really his fault. Try to think about the original show. If you tried to remake it using the same characters but with modern art, which would be a lot of fun, there's something to that old art. Um, it has a lot of fair-skinned people of the light in it because it's loosely based on Christian or Euro-pagan mythology. Crusaders are resisting the in invading, colonizing uh, Luciferians. And, you know, loosely based. It's mostly designed to sell toys. So if he tried to do that post-2020 BLM Marxist riots, what network would show it? Are there any that aren't controlled by super rich globalists? Yeah, we're raging against the machine with Zuckerberg and Jeff Bezos. If you're repeating Soros and Rothschild's talking points, you're definitely on the wrong side. And you know, if, if you're aligned with these billionaires, uh, the odds are probably pretty good that you're the useful idiots and that they're going to profit at your detriment. So Kevin Smith wasn't always a complete pussy. He used to be funny. 
And personally, I think his wife is some sort of succubus who sucked the joy out of him via his cock and turned him into an empty shell of weed and memories. Over the years, she probably kept telling him that stuff was, wasn't politically correct enough. But even in Jay and Silent Bob Part 2, which was pretty freaking bad, Smith had some jokes that were absolutely not politically correct. He had one bit where a girl is fleeing from an honor deletion, um, and that's an issue that you're just not going to see Hollywood touch. So credit to Kevin for just throwing a grenade in the room and going for it. Uh, Then he also included the Kathleen Kennedy Club. Like, dude, give that a rest. They're not an issue. The ADL, SPLC, and other globalist groups have destroyed them years ago. And the thing is, in the movies, they weren't hurting, hurting anyone. They were peacefully and legally assembled, and you attacked them for their beliefs. Like, once you open the door to that, you're saying, oh, okay, well, we can use violence against people who believe differently than us. It's a weird path to go, go down if you are some kind of liberal. It's like, are you really liberal, or are you authoritarian where other beliefs are not to be tolerated? Turns out that a lot of people on the left are actually violent authoritarians. He made fun of the hypocrisy of feminism, and the, uh, some of the bits were funny with, uh, who's the guy who plays Thor? The two girls were, like, talking about how they're going to sit on his face and stuff like that. It was really funny, but it was just there's a bunch of weird stuff in there, too. So, he, he talked, like, he joked about the feminism and the Bechdel test, while including, like, the, the, the stars of the, the show were these two, a bunch of women, so it's like... You know, he was he was just throwing throwing punches in every direction, and, and it worked. It was funny for the most part. So he's not a complete pussy. He, and he, I feel like he's in a very weird space with the woke stuff. He doesn't want to go full 1469, so he's kind of stuck in the middle licking the taint, which doesn't do anyone any good. Why would you do that? Anyway, even the left-wing reviewers said it kind of missed the mark. Well, some were just gushing, gushing, gushing over it. Like, dude... Are you really? Some of them said it said it missed the mark, and some actually said it was outright bad, um, but that they expected it would, it would improve, which as far as you're going to see in a review, because if they actually said it bombed, nobody would send them shows, so you're not going to be able to. It, you know, it is what it is. If you want access to shows, you're going to have to be a sh- uh, you got to be a shill basically. Um, but you can read in between the lines when they do this. It's it's He Man, but without He Man, uh, it's the Tila show. But instead, you get BLT POCs who look like men. Then why not just use men? Because they want to stop boys from growing into these masculine roles and raising strong families. Because that creates in-group preferences, which makes a strong nation, which terrifies them. So they turn women into men. Because what are men or women really anyway? Isn't sex just a social construct? No, gender expression might be a social construct or more likely a fad that you'll grow out of. It's not a fad, Dad! (laughs) Yes, yes it is. In my day, we just pierced things and rode motorcycles, and that was was it. Um, uh, You know, but we didn't cut off our sexual organs, because that would be insane. (laughs) Why would you cut off something that's going to bring you and your partner pleasure for the next 40 years? 40 years in organ, organs... Uh, you know, going to help you uh, create life. And, and just even if you're not into creating new life, uh, I guarantee to bring you and your partner pleasure for decades. Oh, yeah, we're going to go cut that off. Yeah, I can't help but thinking that's a something you're going to regret. Well, it turns out uh, a pretty good chunk of them do regret it. And I'm not even making fun of them here. It's like, be whatever you want to be, but man, you better think twice and then think again about cutting something off your body that cutting anything off your body uh, I'm against all genital mutilation not just for girls it's that is barbaric anyway so um yeah no sex uh, sex is a binary gender might be a social construct and my point is that they want to confuse things as much as possible and they want to make your your kids BLT though it doesn't feel like this is made for kids and it doesn't look like it's going to appeal to kids uh, the, the more I look at this art I think it's cool but you know this was like for the under 12 crowd I think it was for a very young crowd like it was younger than G.I. Joe though G.I. Joe was dumbed down quite a bit so they subvert immediately the viewer's expectations well the viewer is expecting something good maybe some classic story time yeah let's subvert that and give you uh, garbage okay well as long as you're not paying for it Um, so gone are the days of good and evil duking it out to protect and destroy whatever it's 
that's classic storytelling. Mostly, you, this is like European mythology, but really global concepts of good and evil, dark versus light. Um, that's pretty well standard. The male warrior going out. I mean, there's there's African stories that do this story structure pretty pretty well about um, the boy going out and you know defeating a, some some evil some tiger or something like that. It's like every culture has this, except for the globalist group of insane people who are like, okay, women have a fertile reproductive window, so we're going to put them in danger during that reproductive window so there's no future for the tribe. Well, that's like 10 million years. Uh, that's that's more than that. That's like, I don't know when mammals kind of rose to prominence. Probably like 100 million, 65 million years ago, something around that. Uh, uh, you know, we've got a lot of hardwired evolution to protect the eggs, protect the future of the tribe. Because otherwise, if you send women off to battle... What are, who, how are the mathematics of reproduction? Uh, what is it? Uh, R and K strategy, like uh, coyotes versus rabbits. You get where I'm going with this, probably. Um, not your fault. I mean, because I'm all kind of all over the place. But I'm saying it, it doesn't make sense at a core essential level. The idea of women putting themselves in danger. It is like we look at this and goes, oh, this is this is too far, too far the willing suspension of disbelief. We can't, we can't go this far. Anyway, so yes, subversive, subversion doesn't end with a serious plot. Um, that's not that's not good. Uh, so fans may have noticed that the title character titular isn't part of this show, and with good reason. No, dude, get the fudge out of here. There's no no no. Um, animated Sp- Shira, yeah, yeah. Princess of and I saw that. Um, uh, so the protagonist is Tila, a female character, as its protagonist. Good job there. It feels strange to watch her take center stage in a series that's based on He-Man, but it works. Mm, does it really? Does it really? Or are you just shilling so you get the next show? Yeah, I can give reviews too. If you want me to shill some some product, yeah, I can make up the same bullshit that these people are making up. And no, it doesn't work for you. You're you're saying here's the thing the left versus right does the right if you ask the right a question someone on the right and they're they will give you the what is the close to the correct answer that their analysis can bring you the left like beta boys soy boys they will first run it through an equation that tells them what social pressure is going to compel them to say to they don't want to stick their head out of the herd so they'll run it through that first, where people on the right are more likely to be forthright and just say what the correct answer is, even if it's not politically correct. Where the left has to run it through this algorithm to kind of, because they feel threatened or something like this. So no, it, it's, I really, oh, it's, it's focus is on strong, badass female characters. Because chicks are, like women, want to watch cartoons. Listen, this, who's going to watch this kind of stuff? Uh, men from all teenagers up to probably 50. We'll, we'll give it a view. We'll give it a view. And it's got to be great to get that audience. That's probably 90% of the audience. That's Someone correct me if you made it this far. Is it probably 90% male viewers? I'm guessing it is. Um, and they're going to dip out. Because strong, badass female characters? Again, 10 million years of evolution. 65 million years of evolution. Uh Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous. Was it the Cretaceous that the, the, the rock hit the Yucatan or something? The iridium uh, layer and all that kind of... I don't know. National Geographic, man. If you wanted to learn about like life on Earth, you'd read the old National Geographic and they'd tell you, oh yeah, there's some meteorite hit 65 million years ago under the Cretaceous. It's like the KT boundary all this kind of shit. It's like, now National Geographic has a boy dressed as a girl. Like, yeah, we cut his penis off because he says he's a girl now. Oh, Really? Okay, well, you should be trebucheted into the sun. I don't know if you can build a trebuchet that will reach escape velocity, but it's, I'm saying the old National Geographic used to be awesome. And then, then they got bought out by a globalist. You can look up the history of that. It's a trip. Anyway, this is going to be this is going to be stupid. Uh, go, it's on Netflix, I guess, or something. It's coming out. Uh, I don't know next week for the rest of us. Hey, hey we're all going to go watch the first episode if you have Netflix, and if you don't, you'll go get it elsewhere, get a friend to show it to you. Um, and that'll be it. The first episode, that'll be it. So yeah, it'll get, I don't know what the viewers will get, it'll get a big boom on that first episode, and then that will be it. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, guys. I'll see you all next episode.